president of president of risks and development is the chairman of this section. Please, Professor Leroy, you can start. Okay, thank you very much, Giuseppe. Uh, it's really a pleasure for me to introduce this new session of the Mediterranean Symposium on Landslides. Uh, we are going to, to start this new session, the session number three, dedicated to remedial measures, landslide structure, infrastructure, and directions. And we will start with an invited uh, lecture, which is uh, Professor uh, Ergun. It's a pleasure to introduce. We will have a, a, a video, a pre recorded video for his presentation. Uh, professor Mehmet Ufutergun is a full professor at the Middle East Technical University of Ankara in Turkey. And the title of the presentation will be Landslide Stabilization by Pile, a subject not yet stabilized. So I will let the floor to uh, uh, Professor uh, Ergun for uh, his presentation. Does it work? Alessandra, are you able to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just okay. a few Thank minutes. You. Thank you. Okay. So may maybe a few words. When we will have, uh, okay, first of all, an invited lecture, and then we will have different speakers. That's okay. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear, uh, dear colleagues, uh, I'll talk about landslide stabilization um, by piles. Uh, I said a subject not yet stabilized. Uh, there are two parts uh, in this presentation, design considerations in brief and case, st case stories. There are three case stories I'll describe. Uh, the basic mechanisms is uh, stabilization of a, of slope. Uh, uh, simply, we place a pile, one row or two rows of frame structures, uh, in the slope, and uh, the resistance uh, provided by the uh, pile uh, is added to the uh, resisting forces now uh, supplied by the uh, soil frictional strength. And the factor of safety is defined. There are two lines here. You see that the first line is that means the resisting uh, forces, uh, the, the pile resisting forces and the resisting force from the soil are added there. Second approach, second line is also used by some engineers. In a design problem, what are the topics uh, considered? The location of piles. Uh, there, uh, pile rows uh, or frame pile structures are placed usually at the central uh, part of uh, the slips for efficiency. Uh, depth of slip surface is, is usually determined by uh, inclinometers in landslides, uh, but in stable slopes uh, may be determined by slope stability calculations and geological studies. How many uh, rows or frame structures uh, will be used? We use it is related to depth of sliding surface and diameter of piles, and it's a matter of trials based on the method of analysis. Diameter of pile, uh, board piles, red piles are common from 60 centimeters to three meters or more may be used. Spacing of piles, uh, usually uh, spacing to diameter ratio of uh, two or three is used, but uh, up to four or five uh, may be used uh, for arching there. It depends, of course, on, on the strength of the, on the strength of soil uh, there and together with spacing. Depth of embedment, it's controlled by the strength of lower soil rack uh, under the slip surface and the ratio of the upper and lower soil strengths and uh, varies between 0.5 uh, H and 1.5 H, H being the thickness of slipping mass. Structural capacity, that means shear moment and reinforcement, determined after structural analysis of piles. Development of uh, lateral uh, pressures on pile above and below the slip surface. Uh, triangular uniform trapezoidal distributions may be assumed above uh, slip surface, that means in method of slices. 
depending on the method of analysis, it is determined uh, below uh, the slip surface. Numerical methods assign displacements above slip surface and determine both upper and lower distributions. Contribution of piles to slope stability, it is by shear, as I already explained. Uh, provided that the, uh, the moment and shear capacities of piles are sufficient. Modes of failures of the uh, of soil pile system. Now, depending on the depth of embankment and the strength of lower soil, pile may fail either in passive resistance, that means short piles, it's called, or fail structurally and uh, in moment and shear. These are, this is called uh, usually a long pile. Pile spacing and group action uh, reduction. Uh, piles share driving forces applied by slope, whatever the spacing ratio is. But the ultimate resistant formulation is for a singular pile, say for cohesive soils very commonly, is used to control the applied pressure level on piles. And applied pressure must be lower than the ultimate pressure. Yes. Uh, this is practical for SD ratios of, of four or more for closely spaced, spaced piles. Uh, ultimate resistance should be decreased substantially, uh, say by half. Uh, pile had fixity con con conditions. It, it affects structural solutions. They are usually fixed uh, by a beam at the top. Distribution or sharing of driving forces of slope in the case of multi rows and framed uh, structures, two or three or more rows. It's a difficult problem, both in the static and earthquake loading cases. Uh, for a uh, multi-row of piles, uh, Ginsburg and co-workers give some recommendations for the distribution. About the method of uh, analysis, uh, several methods follow a loading procedure of the upper part of pile. Loading uh, by pressure distribution is most uh, most led to conventional methods of slices in slope, slope stability calculations. There may be assumptions of uh, triangular trapezoidal uniform distributions. After stabilizing force for the sliding mass, factored or not, is determined, lower part may be analyzed separately uh, under the action of transferred lateral load and moment by various routines like uh, PY representation or linear springs. Another approach is to increase the formation profile at the upper part uh, rather than the application of pressure distribution, uh, deformation input at the upper pile segment is found more suitable for numerical formulations. And uh, numerical methods try to do it in a unified manner in, uh, along the pile. There are 3D finite element modeling in several studies. It is seen that competing effort may not be justified in everyday uh, stabilization problems. 2D or modified algorithms may be uh, advantages. In each of the above approaches, uh, piles are structurally analyzed and the reinforcement is uh, determined. Uh, longitudinal reinforcement of piles should be taken into account for shear. Although the subject of stabilization of landslides by piles is very popular, a well-established calculation and uh, design uh, procedure is not yet available. There are many studies on the topic and several design procedures are uh, proposed. It would be interesting uh, to see the stabilizing pile design for a landslide project by a dozen geotechnical engineers. Simple calculation procedure followed in the case histories uh, below. Uh, the depth of slip surface is known by inclinometers. Uh, location of pile rows uh, selected at central part of slopes. Spacing of piles is usually uh, two times uh, or uh, three times the pile diameter. Diameter spacing and number of rows uh, have been determined by trials. A simple calculation and design procedure start with limit equilibrium analysis using method of slices. Back analysis are performed on the slip surface. After pile row is located, unfactored inter-slice force is applied on pile as uniformly distributed pressure. Since the, the upper mass is sliding, Soft springs support the upper part of shaft and stiff springs support the embedded part below the slip surface. 
different pairs of spring constants are tried in solutions for displacement shears and moments in a structural program. Safeties for slope, shear and moment along pile are checked. 2D finite element solutions are also obtained for comparison in some cases. It is interesting to evaluate the simple calculation and design procedure used in the stabilization works performed in the years 2009 and 14 period. Limit equilibrium of slope and solution of pile by linear springs are compared with finite element solutions. An additional uh, virtual case uh, of landslip has also been analyzed by the two approaches for comparison. When the ratio of the assigned value of constants of upper and lower soil springs gets higher, maximum moments at lower part increase. And this is very frequently encountered if lower stable soil is stiff. Uh, moments calculated by finite element method are usually lower than those calculated by structural analysis using springs. And shears are somewhat higher in the finite element solutions. If ratio of upper and lower soil moduli in finite element analysis are similar to corresponding spring constant ratios, the results are comparable. Now, uh, case histories in the second part, there are mm, three case histories. This case history one is a, a residential uh, complex uh, on a landslide. Uh, and uh, here you see the, uh, uh, the plan view, the aerial view of the uh, residential site. And uh, it's a quite a large site by uh, two, 220 by 150 meters. And uh, here uh, the landslide occurred uh, here in Ankara, this uh, site, uh, and uh, <clears throat> 12 to 24 meter deep main slide mass uh, in, is in the upper part, and uh, the 12 to 16 meter deep secondary landslide in front of uh, the site. I'll show you in the figures below in a minute. The failure surface is mainly in the mudstone, claystone units under limestone units. Uh, water uh, seeping through uh, limestones are thought to be accumulated on mudstone and claystone units, soften these units and form clay layers. This clay layer is observed to have five uh, to six meter thickness and uh, the failure surface in this clay layer is, uh, or sometimes observed to be under this layer is being in weak mudstone claystone units. And here uh, you see the, uh, the aerial view and also the corresponding uh, pictures D, for example, D is just the, uh, the main scarp is going down there. And on the other side is on the, uh, under, under the, uh, the houses there. I will see it in the, uh, the plan in a minute. And here, this, the B, uh, the B this, this cracks you see here, behind the road is just, let us see the B uh, here. You see, it is just behind here. This is the, just the, uh, uh, the scarp uh, at the top here. And uh, the 12 meters there, the slip, uh, the movement is there quite deep, even at, uh, here at the upper part. And uh, the more uh, photographs, C is just the toe, it's heaving here, the toe. And uh, the, the photograph A is here, just, uh, just at the lower part of the, uh, the site. Here, this is the plan view. Uh, you see the, uh, the scarp here, just uh, the, uh, here. And uh, the inclometer T1, you see is 20 meters, shows 20 meters, the movement. And T6, the, uh, the line, uh, there are two, two cross sections, one and two studied. Uh, here is, is about 22-23 uh, meters here, uh, there, and uh, in, uh, in uh, stabilization studies using uh, inclometer data, two different back analyses were conducted, considering the main and secondary landslides. Uh, 
Firstly, two different residual shear strength parameters were obtained considering the main and secondary failure surface separately. This is called approach one. Secondly, single residual strength parameters were obtained considering the all failure surface together. This is approach two. And you see here the, uh, the section in figure uh, eight, uh, the mudstone claystone layer and the, the upper layer uh, there. And uh, this figure shows uh, along section one, one and uh, two, two, uh, the, the, the pile rows uh, there uh, adopted. And I'll also show you in the plan view in the coming uh, slides. Uh, so these are the uh, uh, elevations and the lengths. In approach one and two, uh, the parameters, the back analysis parameters are reported here, you see. Uh, and um, for the, uh, the, the main failure surface, upper one, it is uh, say eight, eight and a half uh, degrees, uh, the friction and uh, 12 to uh, uh, 11 to 12 for the secondary failure surface uh, from the two different cross sections. The approach two, uh, combined, uh, this is about nine, nine and a half degrees you know, for the whole profile. You see there are some uh, slope stability uh, sections on approach one and two there, just as, as examples. Here, uh, this uh, uh, figure shows, plan view shows uh, the location of the, uh, the, the piles, uh, K1, K2, K3, and also K4 uh, at the toe. Uh, the the, uh, the piles are 1.2 meter diameters uh, in diameter and spacing is 2.4 meter there. And uh, for the uh, tall piles, it is eight centimeters, so one meter spacing there, all right. And uh, structural calculations uh, were uh, conducted uh, using the forces uh, acting on piles obtained from slope stability analysis and structural and finite element analysis for the cases where the soil in front of K3 K piles are displaced now uh, performed. That means uh, in the case uh, that uh, the lower uh, uh, slide moves and uh, the, the, the K3 piles uh, are uh, lowered are loaded in a cantilever uh, state. Uh, uh, these computations uh, show the moments and shears there. And uh, here in the, in the two figures, uh, there's one uh, example uh, here on the left side, left hand side, uh, the springs, uh, the, uh, the upper and lower part springs and uh, the shear and moment uh, diagrams. Uh, on, on the right side, uh, this is the, the, the cantilever K3 piles and a 2D finite element uh, analysis section. Now in the case story three, uh, two, the instability occur, occurred in a natural slope uh, and during excavation works near the toe for a factory building uh, there. And it's a very long uh, slide, 400 meters long, as you see. Also, I'll show you in the plan view. The material in the slope was seven to a 20 meter thick collivium, a slide debris, which constitutes a historic landslide mass, underlain by gravelly, sandy, silty uh, clay layers uh, with limestone blocks, weathered tough and unweathered tough at different uh, borehole locations. Uh, the mm, uh, sliding mass has grown progressively uh, backward, so-called retrogressive landslide, into the as a slope of multi-stage rupture surfaces. You see from C1 to C2, C3, and C4 there, and these 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 uh, occurred in a quite a sh short period, like uh, 15 days or one month uh, there at the site. And uh, it is, it's a fast movement and many kilometer pipes were sheared by uh, the landslide, except just few uh, sh and shortly after uh, they are placed. And these uh, depths were considered as the depth of slip surface. Uh, at the first stage, back analysis of the sliding surfaces of uh, C3 and C4 were performed. 
by this way, the parameters were uh, determined here. There is a table here. And uh, then uh, at the second stage, calculations for sliding surfaces C1 and C2 were performed. Uh, and uh, the parameters for the weather tough layer at the sliding level are assessed as, as uh, the, uh, the phi, uh, angle about 9.2 degrees. As a result of the preliminary works, it is understood that the diameter of the stabilizing piles, passive piles, should be 1.2 uh, meter uh, and more uh, than a single pyro would, would be needed. And the depth of sliding mass was uh, 20 meters at the center line. And uh, it was not possible to stabilize this amount of soil mass by two rows of piles only. So stabilizing excavations were needed to decrease the amount of sliding mass. About half of the sliding uh, depth was removed in this figure three, as you see. And then the piled analysis, slope, slope stability, structural analysis, and final element uh, method were uh, performed. Here, uh, again, it repeats that, that, that uh, again, to show the pile rows again, the K1 and K2 rows, uh, and the one row of stabilizing piles are placed at the upper level, K1. The lower row of piles, K2, will have also a function of retaining wall for the facility for foundation construction or for the factory. Uh, to decrease the momentum and displacements of, of the piles in the second row, permanent ground anchorages were plant at the top or beam of the, uh, the piles. The, the deformations uh, mm, uh, uh, the deformations of the system is controlled by uh, 12 inclinometers, uh, eight in the soil, four in the piles. At each stage of construction works, there are no displacements. Uh, the slope stability analysis of the final stage of works was repeated for horizontal seismic ground acceleration of 0 0.125, 0 0.12. Now in case history uh, three, uh, a large and deep excavation, excavation depth up to 47 meters was required in order to uh, construct uh, basements of buildings uh, within a university campus area. Uh, here is the, the two photographs are just here joined. Uh, is just to show you the, the large uh, excavation there. And um, uh, the, a retaining uh, anchored uh, pile wall was designed, the retaining system is composed of uh, 0.8 meter diameter piles, uh, just one, one 10 uh, meter uh, spacing walls supported with anchors, as you see here on the, uh, the, the, the all around, in fact, uh, on the right. But uh, during excavation, uh, large deformations were observed and the activities were halted and a uh, large amount of uh, soil was uh, simply uh, brought to the site uh, just to support, you see here, uh, the, the, in front of the front wall here, uh, piled wall, there, this, you see this material here to stop the, the movements there. And um, after detailed investigations, uh, deformations are found to be due to uh, a deep-seated landslip along a greywack schist interface there. Uh, this um, uh, yellow dotted yellow uh, line here shows you approximately the, the scarp there, you see. And this is the, uh, the, the front face of the excavations. There, there will be lots of construction and buildings in this area later on completed. And uh, here, this is the this is the plan view of uh, the site. Uh, the, uh, the, the pink scarp line shows you the, uh, the here, uh, this is the extent of the movements here, and the inclometers, uh, the initial inclometers to, to, uh, to, to, to be able to see the, the depth of the uh, sliding layer. And uh, there are two, uh, inclometer two and four will be just given below, I'll show you. Uh, yes, these, these two inclometers you see, uh, th these are uh, 45 meters uh, and uh, 35 meters deep, very deep uh, scarp uh, slide. And uh, uh, two different layers were observed within the study uh, area. And uh, th these green, uh, brown, gray vac units are followed by dark gray clay schist units. 
and uh, the gray wax schist interfaces were found to be inclined and the thickness of the gray wax was, was observed to decrease in the north part of the site. And these are, uh, uh, the gray wax and clay schist units are generally highly weathered. RQD values are uh, very low, majority values are near zero. Uh, and also clay schists are completely weathered in some profiles. Groundwater levels are, they change between 0.8 to 15 meters. Perch water levels are observed in completely uh, weathered schist. Here the mechanism is in fact, again, they, uh, the, the gray wack, uh, the weathered cracked gray wack, uh, the, the, two, the, the rains uh, uh, just and on the schist layer here, and this is the problem. We see now the uh, uh, friction angles are quite low in a minute. Uh, here, the soil rock properties, uh, here we see, uh, this is in the, in the deep excavation uh, project uh, net report. Uh, they are given here, the 30, 30 degrees, et cetera. Uh, in order to investigate the instability, uh, a total uh, of 12 micrometers were installed uh, within the study area. Readings were taken period periodically. These, these are the initial micrometers. Later on, uh, there are more and more, uh, just, just to see this, uh, how it stopped. Incrometer readings showed a deep-seated landslide, uh, and the, indicating that the retaining system, the anchors, piles, uh, is within the observed unstable mass. Uh, back analysis have been performed along many, about 21 sections. The, uh, the slip surface is mainly in schists uh, and uh, cohesion and friction angle values of uh, now 10 to uh, 0 to 10 kPa uh, and 11 to 14 have been found in the back analysis respectively. Uh, and uh, cohesion 5 kPa and friction angle 12 a uh, pair of parameters for schist have been used uh, in the analysis for uh, stabilization. Uh, for remediation, uh, piles having high shear strength and bending resistances uh, uh, were considered. Uh, piles uh, were placed at four different locations. An analysis, analysis section, this is section 20, is shown in the figure below in the slope stability calculations. Due to the restriction of the length of Kelly, which was 37 meters, unfortunately, stage excavations were planned to cope with the penetration depths required for the piles. A large number of structural analyses were performed to determine the reinforcement uh, required. Here, uh, the plan view of the site again, uh, showing you the, uh, the K1, K2, K3, and K4 uh, pile rows. Uh, K4 is, is down uh, now on the uh, foundation area, it's low, uh, and the others, K1, K2, K3, is on the upper part uh, of the uh, now mass there. And uh, <clears throat> these are again 1.20 meter uh, diameter, and uh, uh, each of them, each, each row. Uh, and uh, 37 uh, meter uh, now long uh, there. Now, uh, finally, uh, uh, I want to talk about uh, the, the research need uh, now for uh, slope stabilization by pipes. Research is needed for uh, the designing multi-row and frame pipe systems for stabilization of landslides under static and earthquake loading. So this is the, I already explained, you, you, you use three or four uh, rows or frame pipe systems so uh, what will be the uh, now uh, the loading of uh, these different uh, rows, right? Uh, and especially under dynamic uh, loading, uh, earthquake loading, uh, this is uh, I think difficult to calculate. Uh, potential for secondary instabilities uh, behind uh, pile rows under static and earthquake loading for long piles, especially. Uh, now this is a problem. Uh, so that. Uh, and uh, there was a recent uh, slide uh, this year, last year, uh, for in, the, in, uh, in Trace uh, for a, a motorway project. Uh, it was a very long landslide. 
uh, and uh, the, 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 the pile rows, one or two rows, just uh, uh, now supporting the, uh, the uh, uh, motorway. But uh, if you uh, try to uh, now calculate uh, the, the capacity pressures now under a very high earthquake loading, let's say 7.5 uh, uh, magnitude, which is expected in the in <laughs> near future, I hope it is not in the very near future, uh, then uh, the, the, the lower part of the, uh, the slide uh, also uh, may move and uh, endangering the, the upper part and the uh, motorway. So this is also an interesting point to study. And then finally, comparison of uh, several uh, methods of analysis for better economy. That means the size of the piles, the spacing and reinforcement uh, now for economy, uh, the, the methods, different methods now uh, already proposed now in the literature may be compared. Now this is also, uh, I think, a rewarding uh, study. So thank you for uh, for listening listening to me. Okay. Uh... Thank you very much. I, I want to uh, thank uh, Professor Ergun. Uh, it was a pre-recorded uh, video, so we will uh, let the question for, for a bit further because uh, Professor Ergun is supposed to join us a bit later. Uh, it was a very, very interesting uh, uh, presentation. And uh, uh, I guess we, we can continue this session with the next speakers. I'm very happy to see that there are more than 60 people joining, participants joining the session. That's great. So now let's go further for the next uh, 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 speaker. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Yuri Kaliuk. Yes, Professor, but we have to leave this room. We have to leave ah, this okay. room. Yes. So, so we, we leave and we come back. Okay. In, you, see in the next room uh, just immediately. In a different link. In a different link. Okay, so I will do the same as well. Okay. okay.